I don't know what I'm doing, neither do you. So let's do it together. I have a feeling that's going to get really annoying after a while, but whatever. I'm going to talk to myself, though it's really annoying because there's a delay on the microphone. Cool. Hmm. Well, basically, I would like to make a board game thing or a battle map that is I don't know, we need a name. What should I name this thing? Um, battle. Battle grid. Battle grids? Sure. Uh, C++ desktop console. Yep. Okay, maybe not. Maybe there's different instrumental stuff.
So I want a, do I want this map? Sure, but I don't want the floor. Players start. Um, everything else we can keep. Save it, folder. Levels are maps. Let's call it levels. But it is a map. I don't know. Whatever. We'll call this uh, default. No. Test for now. do is make a grid that we can put little chess pieces and stuff upon. I learned how to do that with a little online tutorial. Here we go. So, of this tutorial. We don't need this A through J numbers on the side. Get rid of my headphones because my voice is delayed in them. So that's okay. Okay. So we're just gonna recreate that. First, we're going to make, so the board is made up of tiles, we're going to make a board. And you know what, I want all of these to be built on uh, C++ behind it. So battle grids is the title, so we're going to go with BG board. Public create class. And we'll put this guy back to Okay, now we've got, whoa, a board that's based upon our C++ class. And we've got our C++ class over here.
Okay. We don't need to worry about C++ for now, but we have it just so we can use it if we want to. We're going to do this in blueprints first. Um, board needs tiles. Those tiles are just going to be cubes. We're going to use a macro, the 2D grid uh, execution macro, which will then spawn the board out so that we have a, a whole grid of these things. So let's make a tile. So an actor, BG tile. Based upon our class tile, BP tile. Okay, save, save all. And I would like to add nothing. What do we not have in here? Where's our Where's our sample stuff? Our starter content. Where do we have it? Where's my starter content? I'm echoing. How about now? <laughs> Is that better? I've turned off the, the listen or the monitoring. It's probably cool. So the Twitch studio, when I was monitoring my own input, was outputting it and doubling it to the feed. Good to know. So I cannot monitor myself. Wonderful. And I have no, I have nothing to add to this project for some reason. What happened? UE4 is missing starter content. Well, that's why somehow it got deleted. Yeah, I want all of this. I don't want any of that. I might want that, but not right now. And I uh, editor symbols for div. That sounds pretty useful to me. 50 gigs. Well, I 
already have that, so hopefully this is just quick. I'll do the debugger stuff later. Is it queued? Great. Somehow, it decoupled my starter content. I have used it. Well, that's fun. We're going to just not use any materials or textures. I'll get that stuff later. Apparently, I have to close this in order to get it. So, we're just going to make our board and follow this. Okay. just want this to be a cube so let's make it over in C++ maybe up here because I hate having multiple little thingies Protected. So we're going to do a new property um, visible anywhere. And equals. And it's, this will be a class U static mesh pointer, I think. Um, I'll just call this the static mesh. Oh wait, a static mesh component. Static mesh component. Static mesh component equals create a default sub object of use static mesh component. Call it the static mesh. this to be the root component. Okay. Let's go ahead and make that for now. And we have it. Hooray. I'll make you a cube. Basic shapes. Yep. Whoa, slow down. Can I save? What do we got to work with here without our starter component? See, we do have some of these things. I guess it has a little bit built in there. Or plain material? No. We'll just leave it as this for now. Um, I want it like, yeah, something like that. Tiles. So we're going to do that in the C. <coughs> Static mesh component. Um, dot. Um, set scale, relative scale, I believe, and that vector is going to be the x is 0, the y is 0, the z, I want it to be that 0.25. This is one of those moments where we have to close and reopen. Wow, okay, no it's not. Something went wrong. Well, oh. 
uh, can't have nothing. And you're not making a black hole yet. Reset. There we are. Welcome back. Now that we have our tile, and I want to make sure that we load back into the other map we made. Test and test. There we go. So our board is nothing. But it is going to spawn a whole bunch of these tiles so that we have a grid to play with. So we want our begin play. We want the 2D grid execution macro. And you know what? I'm going to put this under its own custom event. We'll call this build grid. So, our sector size. In this tutorial, he's got it at 105. The location, this is going to be. This is something I have always wondered. If it builds the grid, let's say this is a zero, zero, if it goes out this way and creates this, or does it surround zero, the origin? So we'll find out. Let's find out. Um, I want to, let's see, X and Y. I don't know if this is a going to be a less than one error. So let's just do 10 by 10, 100. And what we want to do per poly execution, so every time for each one of these, we want to spawn an actor. And the actor we want to spawn is our tile. Break the location there. So we take our poly center, and that's going to be the, trans the, um, the location. open this and see what's going on this is just this is gorgeous isn't it wow that makes it's just so easy to read so it's a for loop inside and it's grabbing what is it grabbing here highlight thank you it's grabbing the y it's taking away one so in our case that would be nine so it's going to for loop from 0 to 9, so 10 times. Yep, OK. So we're going to exit, or inside that loop body, we're doing another for loop, which is grabbing 1 minus the x, so also 9. So it's doing another 0 to 9, but this time off of x. OK, yeah, because it's a two-dimensional grid, so two for loops. And inside that, we're coming out. We're going to make our spit that we've got our spawn attached to the per poly execution. So the index starting at zero, what's, what's being used, it's tracking rows and columns down here. So it's taking our x and our y, dividing by two. So we're going to get uh, five. It's taking that index, which is um, 0 down to here. Five, so 0 minus, so we've got negative 5, <laughs> making a vector. So for both of these, I believe at 0 and 0 should be negative 5, negative 5, and 0. And multiplying by our sector size, right? Yep, which is 105. So we're taking that vector, negative 5, negative 5, 0, multiplying by 105, negative 5, 
525, negative 525 and 105. We're adding another vector that we're creating off of sector size. multiplying it by 1. Why would we be multiplying by 1? If somebody knows why we would be multiplying by 1, let me know. Negative 1 would do something. 1 just is itself. Um, unless maybe this is forcing a conversion into a float, but no, it's exporting. It's doing. Let's do another vector out. So I don't know. Um, so we're adding. Okay, whatever. We're not even using something down here. Fascinating, the world of macros. Anyway, uh, he's got, let's just test this for now and see what happens. We didn't do build grid. it out here put you at zero zero build grid boom well that was easy okay so our board spits out a 10 by 10 grid um, what I want is with this grid I want my mouse cursor. I want to have, um, I want to be able to move around, but I don't want my mouse attached to the camera. I want it to be kind of like the view screen here where I have to click and drag to look around. So let's get those controls going. So then we can build interaction with a mouse on the grid so that we can move around little pieces and you'll kind of see what I'm planning eventually. No, I'll tell you now, the one person watching potentially. There is no good Dungeons and Dragons battle map out there that is easy with just click and drag for a dungeon master to make a little uh, battle map. So I wanna fix that, let's make one. I need to get a, let's see, I want a pawn, I think, for the player to control to just a floating state of the, of the player. So let's make a pawn. BG pawn. That was dumb. I should have named that something else, like player pawn. Again, I don't want you in a separate public section. And let's also make the player controller.
Okay. And my heater is clicking on. Hopefully the noise suppression is taking care of that. So the pawn, I'd, the way I see this is um, there isn't going to be any visual representation of, of um, the players in the game. Well, we could. That would actually be kind of funny if, let's say, you're in the in the game with your dungeon master and everybody's looking around the board and you can see their little orbs, maybe eyeballs. It'd be kind of creepy. Little eyeballs floating around looking at the at the map and what they're going to do. So we're going to make our BG pawn BP pawn. And uh, yeah, let's give our Let's give our pawn a little representation, shall we? So we have the U property. This is the macro that Unreal Engine uses to make it do things in the garbage collector and in the engine. So you stick that above your actual C++ that you're going to make it with. So visible anywhere means that we can see it in the defaults and the instances, that maybe some other stuff. We'll give it a category of components to organize, class, again we're going to use this use static mesh component. You can forward declare down here with putting class here rather so we don't have to do it up there and I'm not going to put the includes in our headers, we'll put that in the implementation. Um, static mesh component again, because I think we're only going to have one our static mesh component. We want to oops, create a default sub object of U static mesh component. We use the text macro to give it a name, static mesh. We say our root component is our static mesh component so that we haven't compiled yet. Right now we just have this default scene root, which is blank, empty, and nothing. So it's going to replace this with our static mesh component when we compile. Whoa, go away. Come back, and there you go. We have a root up here. Or it didn't replace it, it just attached our default scene root to the static mesh component. So let's make it a sphere. So like a basic sphere, yep, under basic shapes. I want that one. We've got it. It is a one size, so that should be okay. Man, I wish I had this. Oh, hey, here we go. Chrome ball. Yeah. Do a little chrome ball. So there's our little ball bearings floating around. So that's going to be our player pawn. We don't have a game mode. We do have the, the C++ Battle Grids game mode. However, I want to make a... That isn't in, if I remember correctly. It's not in here. So I don't like the way that Unreal Engine makes the game mode when you start. So what I'm going to do actually is close, save. I'm going to delete Shell Explorer. I'm going to delete these things. We're going to delete intermediate and delete what's inside of binaries. We're going to right-click our solution. No, we're not. We're going to right-click our U project. We're going to generate the project files. How's that starter current content downloading? We might have it. It's already done. God bless Gigabit. OK, 
Okay, that's done. How are you doing? Clean up faster. Clean up. Oh, there we go. Initializing. Updating. <laughs> no. That's not going to work. We're going to just ignore that. Rebuild. At eight megabytes a second, huh? Yeah, that's slow. So hopefully we can just keep going with that in the background. I don't, I use starter content in other 4.26 projects. So I have no idea why it's suggesting that they're gone, unless it cleaned up at some point. But it looks like we can open without having to worry about that. Failed to load. What? How on earth? <laughs> well, this is a fantastic first stream. We've lost our macro. A built-in engine macro. Fun. You know what? Okay, maybe we do need to wait. So I'm going to pause the stream and come back later once this, which uh, appears to be, actually, hold on. Maybe it sped and zoomed forward. They didn't just like remove the 2D grid macro, did they? 4.26.1 2D grid macro execution. No, it it exists. I have no tasks. So are you done? And it returns. Let's say 100 this time. I think that will remove, if I'm correct in my thinking. Whoops, what happened? Ah, 10, 10. Yep, OK. So you can kind of see the faint lines there. This right here, if we go to 105, it's adding in that bump over 100 is where we get the little separation lines. So those are kind of cool. I'm going to keep them for now. And if I'm... There it is. Look at that. Wonderful. I want the starter content, please. So 
so that we can do, we can get this little guy some, I don't know, some walnut appearance. Yeah, that's nicer on the eyes, isn't it? And I also want to get rid of the, what do you call it? Exposure crap, which I think if we just do like a zero and a one here, is how we do that. And if we go infinite extent, yeah, there we go. Much better. Kind of dark. What are we got? We got oak. Nice. Okay, so we've got our oak, our oak grid. We're moving along. We're happier. Get our pawn back out. So the pawn is what we're going to possess. Um, let's give it a. We need our game mode. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We deleted back up. We deleted our game mode because it was badly organized because Unreal Engine doesn't put things in public and private folders by default. So we're going to make our C++ class, which is going to be of game mode base. And we'll get to game state in a bit. So game mode base. We want our BG game mode base. There's a difference between game mode, game mode base, and game state, and game state base. Don't combine a base without a base. It doesn't work. Just go for base. You'll be kicking yourself if you don't figure it out early. I think the game mode base comes from game mode or something. I'm not sure. There's two things. But you got to do this in order to access these grayed out little things over here. We need to make speed up your indexing. Thank you. Got to make these things. I don't think we need to do anything in here yet. Let's just close all the tabs for now. We want to make our in our blueprints make our BG game mode base, make our blueprint, our BP game mode base. That is going to be our game mode and boom, we have unlocked being able to select stuff. So our pawn is going to be our BP pawn. Um, we have a BG player controller, but we haven't made the blueprint yet. Let's do that. BG player controller, BP player controller, save all, BP player controller. Uh, that's all we need at the moment. We're not going to be able to control anything, obviously. But if we do that, look at that. <laughs> We've got our Chrome ball that we are controlling that has spawned. Um, all of our tiles here in the outliner spawned. We've got our player controller and our pawn. Okay, perfect. So far, so good. We want our pawn. So in multiplayer days yet to come, we will have a bunch of these chrome balls floating around, but we don't necessarily want our view to be of a giant chrome ball. We want to be slightly outside of it. So we want to give ourselves a camera. Yes, we want a camera. So on our pawn, we're going to take our component, our property macro again. We want a U, um, I believe it's camera component they're smart in naming these nicely so camera 
component over here. We're going to say camera component, and we're going to do the create default sub object again of view camera component. Yep, text. Here's our camera. And our camera component. We don't need a, an arm, I don't think. Usually, when you have an arm for a third person, you've got your spring arm, and the camera's attached to the spring arm, so that the, the spring arm shortens and extends for zoom. However, I think I will just put the zoom on maybe the... on a camera setting itself instead of distance we're not and that's not even zoom really when you're playing games and you're zooming with the mouse wheel you're dollying in and you're dollying out so the, the camera's actually moving but we like to say zoom because it's an easier word than dolly so camera component we're going to set up attachment for now we'll put it on the static mesh component Boom, look at that. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's real nice. Um, X is forward in Unreal Engine. Move that away. So if we do that, there's our eyeball so far. Um, I don't know at what point the vision actually begins. It might be right here. So we may, this may work. Look at that. It does. And there we are. So um, I think that works. Let's just lock in that camera position, which is just 50 on the X. So let's go ahead and do that. So camera component, um, we're going to set up no, we're not. We're going to set relative location, which was 50 on the X, zero every, whoop. It's an F vector of 50 on the X, zero in the Y, and zero in the Z. Uh, we don't need anything else, so compile that. And good, our default is there. What else we got here? We got a clear coat. That's nicer, I kinda like that, a little darker. We'll get an eyeball texture at some point. But yeah, that's nicer. Okay, so let's get some controls going. Um, Let's forward think a little bit. I used to want to put all the controls in the player controller because to my mind, oh, that's the brain, right? So the player controller should do the controls, but no, if you ever want to have like the ability to control different pawns, the brain sends the input, but the thing itself, the body, should hold the rules. So we're going to put the actual um, rules of control inside the pawn itself. So that someday, let's say we're playing this game and um, we add in some crazy thing like you could come down into the actual fighter or wizard or something and do the controls, you know? Let's not put ourselves into an impossible corner where we can't do fun, cool things down the road once the basics are established. So let's uh, open up our project settings and go to our input. And what we want is when the right mouse button is held down, wads, 
uh, WASD, our, WAD, our WASD controls will allow us to do movement. Right? Is that what we want to do? I have a chess game that I downloaded. Let's take a look at what that does. So we'll go open that up. So this one has just a board, and if we hit play, we can see this is a network built. And yeah, we've got rotation, only rotation. That's what they did here, nothing else. So that doesn't help us. However, some of these things we're going to use, such as um, in this 3D, see how we're able to hover over. I like that. I kind of, you know, if we go back to, so now it's the other turn. So we might use some of the networking that is in this to client two now has it. Um, I kind of want to be able to pick up and drag pieces. However, the click to click might be cleaner. So we'll think about that, but that doesn't help. So let's make our own. Um, so we're going to need an action mapping for our right mouse button. So we'll call this right click and it's going to be our right mouse button. We're going to need that. We're going to need forwards and left and right because we do want to be able to move around. I want I want to be able to get in there and look at the battle map. So we have our W and we have our S and this is going to be forward. Um, forwards one, backwards is negative negative one, um, and then we need our right. <coughs> Right is D, and left is A, negative 1, I think. We'll see how these scales go. So we've got our forward and our right. Okay. And then in our pawn... Setup, there we are, our setup player input components. So we have an axis mapping. So um, bind axis, is that it? should have just left. Actually, what we're going to need is, what should we grab? We should grab this because it's got C++. Aha, uh -huh. we didn't need to open anything. Go away co-op game, because I've just got Google. We need to do, we needed to grab the input component is what we needed, and then we can bind access. That's what I was missing. So we have um, 
forward. I'm going to rename that to move forward and move right. So move forward. We're going to bind that to this. Um, and the, we need to have, so this is BG or ABG pawn. We're going to make a function called move forward, which we will do now. So um, it doesn't need to be called by anything but ourselves. So we will do a uh, U function. Blueprint callable, sure. Um, category equals, we're going to make this BG pawn as the parent, and we'll call this um, input. No, we'll call this movement. And this will return nothing, move forward, it's called, and we want a float of. I think value and we'll implement. Okay, so it's bound. So we're going to let's see for a pawn for movement. Oh, excuse me. So UE for pawn movement C plus plus. On movement component is what we want, right? So, on U pawn movement component, do we have one? Get movement. Get movement component. What we actually want to do is do a um, auto um, movement component is equal to get movement component. So if we have one, how do we move? I've done this before. Add input vector, I believe, is what we want. We want MC add input vector. There we go. And this is blueprints. I want add input vector C API. There we go. We need a world vector and a four. So F vector, world vector. Huh. Their syntax has only two parameters, but they list three. So the world direction, um, I believe, Add input vector. So the world vector is going to be, we need our, our forward, so we can get a forward facing. Mm -hmm. Get forward vector. Yep, okay. Get actor forward vector. So um, we need an 
auto forward vector is equal to get get actor forward vector. Um, and then we need to multiply We need to do a get actor location times, um, I think, get act, uh, our forward vector, which let's just do it down here. Get actor forward vector. And then we pass in the value. And that should do it. Okay. Let's test that. And we don't have any mouse movement yet. Our forward vector, whoop, nope. So this is wanting just the bull. Okay, so now we're gonna do times value here. It's all just, yeah, we're going to make so that should result in an F vector. We want add movement input, I think. Do we not? Maybe it's not on the movement component. Add movement input. Ha, huh. we don't even need to get the movement component. This does it already. That's why I'm confused. So we want to get actor location times it by get actor world uh come on get actor forward vector and then we want to pass in the value and the other one is default false so we don't need it so that should work Oh, let's multiply it by speed, because the value coming in is going to be 1. So let's go with um, 50 F. Anything happening? Hmm. On move forward. Nope. Move forward event. Add movement input. <laughs> I see. I'm getting this all, it doesn't need to be so complicated. We're just moving forward. We just needed the world direction. We didn't need our, our location. Oh my.
Let's at least print something. Log temp warning text move forward called. Oh. Why is that occurring? Because it's being called even if this value is zero. So however, for some reason add movement input is not not working even with zero maybe 50 is too small but the scale value hmm well I've already done this before so we'll open up my spaceship game that I was working on This is pretty fun. We and then if we hit spacebar, we go forward. Whoa! And we've got thrusters all over the ship. Pretty neat, huh? I might return to this, but that's more complex than we need right now. So let's see. Open up. Right here, I want a new window. Add impulse is what I did. These are based on thrusters. Maybe this. Okay, so this is with this is with a character, however. Rather than a pawn. But pawn should yeah, it's in it's in pawn, so this is this can be called on a pawn. World direction is just the direction in world space to apply. So maybe it's maybe this is not Maybe that is not receiving um, a direction. Get actor forward director. Get actor forward vector should get the forward vector of the root component, which by default. So if it is it null, it, if the, if we didn't have a root component, it would have been returning a one zero zero vector. So forward on the x axis, 
positive in the x-axis direction is the default. We do have a root component. So, and our root component is a static mesh. So does, um, let's see, UE4 static mesh forward vector. But we don't need to do that. What we just need is our um, is our pawn as our mouse. The so add movement input, and we can just make sure this is working by saying one, and just make it a um, the basic vector and um, we can get rid of that because we know it's calling. So this should push us on the x-axis. It still is not. So I'm going to close and reopen just in case that's the problem. interesting Let's see. Okay. So the pawn does not by default have a movement component. So Aha, uh -huh. here we go. This is answering some Okay. So it's trying to get a movement component. It's not getting one, probably. Internal add movement input. Force by default was false. If force, so that was true, so otherwise not is move input ignored. Are we ignoring move input? Let's find out. Is that in the default thing somewhere? I don't know, but let's get a movement component. Floating pawn movement is, I believe, what we want. So we're going to give a floating pawn movement component to our pawn, and that should fix things. So a U property, U property, visible anywhere. Categories, components again. Class, you floating 
on is it movement component? Floating pawn movement. Yep. Floating pawn movement component. And we'll call this floating pawn movement component. And this thing is yeah, it doesn't attach to anything. So we just we just need to make it. So floating pawn movement component create a default sub object of u floating pawn movement component. We'll just call this our floating pawn movement. Okay. Are you not happy? Did I spell it wrong? To the API. Um, UE4 floating pawn movement. Maybe. Do I need a, it's in the engine module, okay. Let's try that, maybe it needed a um, better header. But this should forward declare it. Maybe it doesn't have a component at the end. That's just, that's just strange. I have, <laughs> I have the exact include that the API is suggesting. So, okay, maybe I'll go back to this one.
pawn should come with yeah a pawn we are a pawn and a pawn comes with a movement component right here pawn movement component get movement component yes we have one We're not creating our movement component. These are our, so let's find our on movement component. Hmm. Okay. So maybe we don't. Maybe we just need to make pawn movement component. Which is going to be of pawn movement component. Okay, okay. I could have sworn a pawn comes with movement. We are still not moving. Okay, I'm going to look at some code from something else real quick. Because I've gotten this to work before. Yep, that should work. Yeah, this, this should work, actually. I don't even need that float value comes in, move forwards being called, bind axis, move forward, add movement input.
I shouldn't even have had to do that pawn movement component. If auto MC equals get on get movement component the log log temp text got movement component. Let's see if that pops out. This will tell us do we have a movement component? We should have one. So what happens if we put that back? I'll be damned. So we need not only the movement component, we then need to do a do that. Didn't like it the last time we did this. I want the floating pawn movement. Why am I adding this incorrectly to C++?
this is why it is floating pawn movement component. Okay, well here is the include. Okay, and now we have it. Yes, <laughs> all right. Whew. That took a while, okay. Got that guy, which is the x direction, the way it's rotated when it spawns. is because uh, it's just spawning where I'm looking. So we need to put in the player start at zero, zero. Let's raise it up a bit and move it back. We're working. We are working, cool. We can get rid of that now. So we can move forward. Let's make a move right. and this will be so I want this now to be get forward vector to test that and this I want get actor right vector believe it or not they have that because this is common duplicate but this time we're gonna move right and we want move right We can fly. We are flying. Sweet. Okay. Now um, we want the camera's rotation. We want the camera always to be looking where the mouse is going. So Input axis is going to be um, look or wait. It's um, yeah, it's look up is the mouse y axis, and I think upwards is negative one. And then we need also, we need turn, which is going to be our mouse X. So a U function of um, the callable category is our DG pawn. We're going to make this camera void lookup float value. 
void turn float value. So this is our movement. And now we need camera. So input component find axis look up this abg pawn look up duplicate turn and turn <coughs> okay so our lookup is going to be How do we do this? I've done this before. Let's find it. Controller pitch input and controller yaw input, but that is on a character, is it not? Cool, it's in pawn, we're good, perfect. Um, and then turn is add controller yaw input. And we could have um, we could have just called these directly and mapped them here, but we'll leave them in our own functions for now just in case we wanna do anything special. such as um, if right mouse button is down. Uh, not getting anything yet. If it is a local player control. So we have a, yeah, okay. So what I think is occurring is in our pawn camera, we may need to be on a spring arm. for a first person, let's see. Use pawn control rotation. There it is. And there's our shadow. So currently we're not using the direction we're looking in for movement, which is a little disorienting. So um, first of all, let's check this in our defaults. So under camera, use on control rotation. And our forward vector, rather than that, it needs to be where we're looking. So we need to get our camera component, get forward vector. 
camera component get right vector, I think. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. I call that a success so far. Um, I don't want this just to move around with the mouse freely because we're going to want our mouse available so that we can click and drag pieces around on the board. So what we're going to do, first of all, is um, see. Let, me, let me comment that. Anything we want to comment here? All right. Well, our lookup and our turn need to be attached to a Boolean. So we're going to... Um, Um, B show, let's see, set show mouse cursor. So controller set mouse cursor. Aha. Maybe? Nope. Okay. Where is it? What do we do? Um, player controller. Yeah. So maybe not here, but in begin play. Controller. Let's see. We're going to do um, cast our controller, or we're casting to a BG player controller. Yep. Um, our controller. And we want to be show mouse cursor equals true. Perfect. And look at that. Actually, it does, it works that we have to already click to move. It's both buttons. I think that works so far. I think maybe we can do um, shift and uh, shift and control maybe to go up and down. I think people sometimes for elevation I've, that that works, and then um, yeah, and then uh, I do I like this with the click and drag as it is by default. That might be because of input. Um, so we want set input mode to um, so we need to make an input mode to interface, huh? Do 
already have them. Um, all right, let's see. Set an F input. There we go. F input game mode and UI. Which is a database, so hold on. Set input mode. There we go. So we made one, we're making one with the, it's a constructor of this class and we're making it right here. So we don't need to cast it. So we're going to have UI, um, especially if you're the, uh, if you're the dungeon master, because you're going to, uh, what I want to be able to do is click and drag out from the UI to spawn tokens on the battlefield, um, that will snap to the grid. So we need to be able to click on our UI. So does that ruin anything here? Not yet. So I think next I'm going to put a little UI with a button just to test with that. And we're going to spawn cubes. I think that's a goal. We're going to click and drag spawn cubes onto the grid and be able to move them around to snap them. So that's what we'll work on next. Uh, I gotta go eat lunch so that I have some energy and uh, to continue forward on this. But I will be back in 15 to 30 minutes or so, I think. Sounds good to me. So.
Okay. <clears throat> Let's get back to it. We, last time we left off, a few minutes ago, we were working on, we've got our floating eyeball pawn that moves around and looks at our board. Um, the mouse, when we click either the left or the right mouse button, moves the scene. It will travel in the direction, excuse me, that we're, um, that we're pointed at. What I wanted to test or work towards now was maybe maybe let's have on the the right side or maybe across the bottom. I don't know what would be most or least invasive and on the right. So. Let's start working with UI. So we're going to make a new folder, we'll call it UI, and inside it, we're going to do, let's see, let's make a HUD class. Do we need a HUD class? I don't think so. We can just use the default. So let's make a new um, widget blueprint, WBP underscore, and we'll call it our, um, let's see. We know that we're going to have Dungeon Master. One person's going to have the control of the, of the session um, to spawn things. Players will come in. And we might give them the ability, excuse me, we might give them the ability to um, move stuff around, uh, maybe just their own pawn, uh, their, their own character that the DM can assign to them, but they're not going to be able to spawn things. So this will, we'll call this um, the Dungeon Master, uh, or... This can be more than just, let's say, D&D. Um, we'll go with um, Game Master Hood. And on the Game Master Hood, um, let's go with a border we'll anchor it, anchor it to the bottom um, move it to the middle and then up and we'll do this and this, I think. No. Let's go to the side. And this time, one, and this will be halvesies. And now we're going to go all the way up that and then we'll come out and um, let's set it dark and point seven maybe five um, you know what let's give it a give it a background blur effect in there as well the background blur is what will anchor to the side that there we go and we want it to stretch all the way so that's better and then um, one I like that no offset at the bottom and 
and we're going to come out a little bit more. Let's make it a flat 360. This border, no padding, it fills stretches, background blur. Let's give it a blur of like five, two. Yeah, let's do two. Um, and we can drop this down a little bit. So let's say 0.5. So we want to think about when we connect Maybe the DM, the GM, the game master is the server. The guy who makes the session will then um, have the, the game master interface and anybody else who controls after or who joins or connects afterwards are just players. So... For now, let's make this um, single player focused, and then we'll work on networking down the road. So player controller on begin play is going to um, create a widget of our game master hood and we're going to add it to the viewport. And there it is. And if we click and drag on it, we're still moving the camera. So we'll... that's good. I think do we want that? Who knows. So border visible How about the borders not hit testable. Same with, okay, not hit. All right. So inside this border, let's do a scroll box. So this will become a scroll box if we overflow it with a ton of stuff. And you know what? I actually want this bigger. Let's go out to 450. And then I'm thinking a um, uniform grid panel inside that scroll box and this is going to be what will fill up with um, toys to drag out onto our board um, and then we can categorize them down the road so that we have walls um, doors furniture obstacles that we can toss out there and then um, tokens creatures bad guys monsters and heroes and what i'm thinking is we're going to look into doing um, ambiguous chess-like pieces so that we avoid the complex and um, detailed 3D work. So this grid panel let's see We'll call this our um, uh, I don't know our object tool. No, we'll call this our um, objects grid panel. It's a variable. Um. We need to have things that we can toss out onto and click and drag out onto the board. So let's think about that.
do we want an actor or a pawn for our pawns? Uh, we can possess these things and receive input from controllers, or we could give them AI as well. So, I'm thinking we keep this very simple as just an actor. This is chess. We're not going to be, this is, this is a, a chess board, so that when we fight our monsters, which is going to be, with Dungeons and Dragons, for example, will be completely pen and paper or using something like Fantasy Grounds. This is just a very simple visual that we can use for moving tokens around on a board. So we'll stick with Actor, and we can upgrade later if we want to. So this is going to be our master, um, we want to call it a token, on our tiles. So how about... Um, Yeah, we'll call it a token. Okay, so we've got our Got our token. One second. When the wife texts, you want to reply. Pro tip. Um, so we've got our token. Again, let's move this to here. Get rid of this unnecessary extra public. And our token is going to, excuse me, uh, we'll have, again, a root of a static mesh, and we're just going to work with cubes for now, shapes. So this is, again, visible anywhere um, in a category of components. Class, uh, use static mesh component. And over here, again, our static mesh component. Use static mesh component. Static mesh. And our root component will be our static mesh component. Um, I don't think we need these to tick, so we can go ahead and just get rid of that for some extra performance. Um, I think that's all we need for the moment. So let's make our blueprint class off of what we just made. So our beachy uh, token. This guy will have a cube from basic shapes. This cube, so we're using that wood on that other thing. Let's go with a, what materials do we have in starter content? What do we got? Gold's cool. Polished marble, maybe. That sounds like a, um, a chess piece sounding thing. Let's do that. Let's go with polished marble. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
That looks nice. And um, because our board are one-to-one -one squares, just squished. Um, let's make our let's make our tokens slightly smaller so that they sit in the center. So let's go with um, like a 0.75 size total. So our static mesh component will say set relative scale 3D to an F vector of 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. You know what? Let's make them a little taller. So we'll go with a 1.5 on the, on the Z. Reset defaults. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so there's our token. Um, and we want to be able to uh, click and drag from our interface an icon out here, drop and it will spawn at the mouse point. Um, it'll and it'll get the the tile underneath the mouse and spawn it and snap it to the grid. So we're we're gonna stick to a, a grid snap rather than like tabletop simulator with the physics, um, so that we don't have like a. I'm trying to avoid the whole. Um, kitschy, gimmicky physics simulation of flip the board kind of scenario. And um, increase speed. Because if you're having to click and drag and move with physics and stuff, you can knock stuff over and then you just, you're wasting game time. So We want to have an inventory or a reference to this token, which our click and draw drag when we um, when on drop or it's going to be <clears throat> actually on canceled. Um, because we're going to be dropping it not on top of, uh, um, we're not moving a widget from one place to another. We're going to be canceling our drop. So it'll cancel and on that it'll call a spawn actor and then handle the location of um, the spawn actor on a square. So we need to have a stored reference to this BP token. So we're going to just do this um, hard-coded, excuse me, um, maybe a bank that this Game Master HUD can access. So a, a um, yeah. Maybe maybe we'll create a little um, a bank for all of our pieces, the references to be stored within, so that we don't have to duplicate that. And on the server, the server holds the bank of references, and that's what will get tapped. Because um, the game master doesn't need to spawn it, the client doesn't need to spawn it. It's the server that's going to be asked to spawn it. So the server will hold our um, our bank. So. How do we want to go about that? It's the game mode. Game mode is server, right? I think. I'll look it up.
UE4 game mode server side. Yes, game mode exists only on the server. Game state replicates game dependent variables to clients. Okay, so yes, our game mode in here is where we should create our, um, our reference bank. So let's think about that. <clears throat> I'm thinking we make an array or maybe um, a set. Yeah, maybe a set because we only need one of each. So under um, a protected header, we're going to do a U property. This is going to be edit anywhere so that we can access it. Um, blueprint read write category um, BG game mode base and this will be under config. And we'll make this a T array of ABG token pointers. And I think we can class that so that we don't need to include it. Um, and we'll call this our, we should have, should we have one big giant bank? Or should we organization is always good. So maybe We'll do um, let's make this character tokens. Um, hmm. And you know what? We don't want this to be. We want this to be subclass of um, ABG token. And can we forward declare it within? That's cool. Okay. Um, this is going, we're going to hold for now our characters, which are going to be our little marble uh, cubes. So we're going to compile that. Hey, we've got two viewers now. I'm famous. So over here, uh, our game mode base, we're not going to see it here. However, in our class defaults, there it is character tokens. So we're going to add a BP token. No, we're not. We're going to say, um, yeah, to hell with it. We'll do the, the BP token for now. So now our game mode, we need to be able to get this reference. Um, I think going with a an interface. So this is going to be our BPI for blueprint interface. And we'll make this our for our game mode. And um, something I learned that we can do is do a um, get uh, game mode reference and then have an output and we'll call this so we're, we're trying to get 
specifically our BP game mode reference. Name it. Game mode. And now on our game mode, we're going to implement this interface. There it is. And this will return us. So when we go over to here, okay, on construct, get game mode, game mode reference. We can call that. And this will return it, and we can promote this to a variable. So now we've got a reference to our game mode. We'll put this in our references. So from that, we can access, get our character. Yeah, see, now we've got access to it. So I want to put a button in there. And that's going to be its own thing also. So let's make a button. So WP um, token button. Desired on screen, get rid of the canvas panel. I'm going to go with a size box. Hundred by a hundred, maybe. It might be too big. I don't. I don't know. Inside that size box, we will put a button. This button, give it a darker shade. Like that, maybe 0.75, maybe all the way black, 0.5. No, because our background is black, so we want to be able to see these things. We'll just do that. And um, eventually, someday we could have images on our buttons of the thing that we're not Intel's testable. Um, of the thing we're spawning. So, <laughs> so that's our color. Let's make our color like a dark green. You know what? Get rid of that for now. Let's just go with green on the button. The button itself will be green. And we'll pump it back up in opacity to a full on one. So this button is going to spawn token button. <clears throat> and in our hood, let's add a token button. Add it a little inside. The slot padding for each of these will be, let's say, fifth. Yeah, 15 is good. Reduce that down to five. You know what? That's too much. Let's go with um, 10. Okay, so ideally, this will be generated. Um, based on this, uh, the bank that we have that will be filled. This will have a bunch of different tokens, um, not just this generic master token. Um, so then we can have a bunch of different ones that are spit out and dynamically generated in a list. For now, cool, we can click our button, it doesn't do anything. 
Let me still move around. And what's cool, okay, so clicking and dragging off that button, it does register we're on the button. So in the UI, um, we want to make a, we need a drag and drop operation. So this drag and drop operation, we need to know the um, token to spawn, which will be um, of type BP token. Uh, it's going to be a BP token class reference. And this is exposed on spawn and instance editable. Wait. This we need to know. So if we have like, um, so if this is our master, our parent class, and we're going to have, let's say, a um, object A, B, and C, and we're only storing the master, class, the parent class, we need to know specifically A, B, or C that we're dragging in order to spawn. So, how do we want to do that? First of all, let's set up our drag and drop. I know there was a YouTube for this, if I can find it. There it is. This is what I want. Let's make sure it's not going to loudly blow up. Okay, what are you doing? So you've got that. Ah, okay, so he created a widget per 
per item. So this guy, I'll show you. Uh, the Imagineers, he's um, dragging and dropping his uh, sofas and things into, into a scene. This is what basically what we're trying to do is exactly this. Um, he's even got a little delete function. However, his is just going right into the 3D world like this and right in the mouse. We want to, we're going to add in an extra functionality to snap, um, snap to grid. But it looks like when he starts making similar thing, he's a little widget. He's got a widget dedicated to that sofa type with an image of it, which we'll get later. But I believe that will then hold a reference Here's the line tracing we're going to do. Spawn actor. Here we go. So the class. Mm, okay, so he's hard coding it in. Interesting. Okay, that's enough to go off of. We can figure that out. So um, let's make, let's not go with BP token for now. This is our parent class. Um, actually, this is off BG token and this is going, we're gonna name this actually as our, as, um, Object A. And then um, let's make object B and object C. And in fact, this is where we don't want to do that because these are all going to have different scales. Our parent should just be very basic and default. So let's make sure our, go back to our cube. Okay. So object A is going to be this. Object B is going to be um, a cone. And we're going to go with um, slate, sandstone. No, we'll, we'll, we'll still we'll stick with marble, and our object C is going to be a sphere. Basic shapes, sphere. Okay. So we don't, so our token button, what we actually want to do is call this object A, object B, and object C. So object A is going to be, um, green 
object B is going to be red, and object C is going to be yellow. OK. Hood, we can add and we'll call this object A, object B, and it's to the left, and object C. centered in the stretch. Okay. I think hmm. maybe it doesn't store. Maybe we'll do what he did. Um, so the drag and drop operation, I'm going to do a very similar setup. So, all right, on object A, graph, it's just a button. However, we're going to override on mouse button down. I'm going to detect drag if pressed mouse event goes into the pointer key and we want left mouse button and we're going to return now we want to do um, on drag detected Going to create a widget. Which is going to be our that button that we made. We need to create a drag and drop operation now. This is the payload. It's also the drag, de the visual, connect, pivot. I want it on the mouse down. Okay, so if we test, hold on. Maybe it shouldn't be a button. some things we need to make sure we have in our player controller. Um, actually in our drag and drop, really. No, that's a, that's a player controller. We want click events, mouse over events,
Is it because it's a button? Maybe it's not a button. Maybe it's just an image. Yeah, okay. So there it's working for drag and drop. So we can't do buttons. That's the issue. So this is our object A picture. So this is the object picture. Copy, go to the button, paste, red, orange, red. There we go. Get rid of the button. Paste object picture is going to be yellow. Um, and this is, I don't want to have to do this for every one of these widgets, though. And widgets are not. They can't inherit. Um, and they're all going to be unique, holding their a reference to what they want to spawn. So maybe they look up based on a, an ID, the object to spawn. So it finds it in the bank and in our, um, in our array. So our array has a, B and C references. Um, How about a database that is made up of a string and then the reference? I like that idea. We literally search by the ID, the string, row name, and then we get the reference out. That's what we're going to do. I've done this, and this is something I've done before. So, okay, open it up. Uh, types. We need to make a table row base. So we're going to make a header. So I like to do add new file. We're going to call this um, bg types.h. Whoops. Apparently, you cannot copy and paste from uh, Visual Studio over into Writer. Um, we need to do a pragma once. We will include engine data table.h, include bg types dot generated dot h. Now we're going to make our use struct blueprint type struct, and this is going to be a f um, bg token bank. Yeah, public f table row base. It inherits from f table row base. 
Uh, we need our generated body macro. And then um, <coughs> what it's going to be made up of is a U property of um, edit anywhere, blueprint, let's say read write. And this is going to be of um, I don't know what's better is f strings or f texts with Unreal. I think texts are localized, so why not? We'll go with f text. Um, and this will be of uh, the token name. And then we're going to have another edit anywhere blueprint read write. And this needs we'll need to know of include. Actually, maybe we can just forward declare of um, t subclass of class bg token a bg token a bg token token class reference okay We have a data type, a data table. So we should be able to now go to uh, miscellaneous, yep, data table of BG token bank. We'll make, call this DT token bank. And there we go. Okay. So we're going to add a row. The name is going to be object A. And it spawns that. Yeah, this is great. Okay. Object B. Object C. Um, and I think we can... Can we give them new names? Can we change the row name, please? Yes, we can. There we go. Um, so this is going to be our object A, object B object C. And the token name, in fact, we'll go with cube, cone, sphere. Do we need a token name versus a row name? Yeah, maybe we'll have a um, and we'll, we'll, we'll change some stuff, you know? So um, for now, we'll leave it. So um, an object, a BP token, anything that's off of these should have of um, edit defaults only. Yeah. Um, maybe blueprint read only. Category is equal to BG token config. And this is going to be an F text of um, token name.
So our object A under our class defaults under config, this guy is our cube, even though he's not. Now he is. Um, this is our cone. This is our sphere. Our drag and drop operation, or our widget, I don't want to have to make a widget per token. I want to be able to dynamically create these so that we can just populate um, populate our game with new things and then when we run it the um, the interface can just create things. So like um, maybe our database eventually each token not only has a reference to the class, but a reference to the um, uh, thumbnail for dragging into the world uh, for display on the user interface. So our object A, this is no longer object A, this is just the token thumbnail. which it has the picture. So we'll just we'll put this under config. Um, and this, it should have a text of the token name. And this is going to be editable and expose on spawn in this picture. For now, we'll leave it as green. The drag and drop operation on drag canceled is when we're dropping it because um, there is no, there is no um, hood over here to drop onto. So when we let go, it's actually going to get canceled. And um, now that I'm thinking about it, I actually want this centered. Yeah, that's better. So let's go back to that video keep going. What is going on? There we go. So where were we? We created the, the widget, created the drag and drop operation. We're loading that operation up. Aha, okay. Not here, but well, we'll get back to that. So we need to have on drag canceled in the th thumbnail itself.
into get mouse position on the viewport. Line trace um, by channel. Vector 2D times float. D project screen to world. Because we got to go from 3D, uh, 2D space on the viewport into our 3D world. So there's depth. I need to get the owning player. Hold on. This might be, this is from October. So get, let's see, viewport scale. Is this deprecated? No? Okay. I wasn't sure if there's a, a new way do it. Okay, so this should deproject it. So this from our the position, that's where we start. So it's getting our mouse. And then the end point is going to be from where our mouse is in the direction. Um, it's the position plus, whoop, plus another vector which is going to be our direction times outward. So like, how far out? Um, you know, let's start with 2000, that we can reach out 2000. So we're drawing a line straight out from the mouse into the world 2000 points out. That should hopefully hit the, hit the board. Um, out hit. We're going to break that hit result. Spawn an actor. And the class, um, for now, let's go ahead and do this hard-coded, and then we'll return to it to um, build out our database. Um, more robustly later. The location is going to be the spawn transform. So wherever we our mouse hits is going to be the location of where we spawn the actor. So this should work apparently. Yep. Look at that. And because we have no collision, except on us, actually these cubes do have collision. Cool. Because it is a static mesh. And we have collision. So we're just building these on. We could keep building. Pretty cool, right? So we've got dynamic spawning of these things. This isn't what we want because we want to be able to snap and have them like chess pieces on the grid. But that's a pretty cool step forward. I think now we need to um, get rid of this hard code. So what we're going to do is we've got this... Um, oh, data table, which let's put it in a different folder because it's not a blueprint. Except redirectories. So our game mode base doesn't need this. What we need to do is when 
when it's dropped. From our data table, we need to, this is a name. So this needs to actually be of type name. We find if it exists. The game mode should store the data table. So this is our token data bank. And it's going to be of type data table. It's that. We're going to put this in our. We'll just leave it and put it under config. Um, okay. That's on the server, the game mode. This is going to. Get game mode. Get the game mode reference. Data table. Get the token data bank. We need to get there we go. Get the row from this name if the row is not found print string this shouldn't ever happen because token names should hopefully be set properly but um, error token name not found in data table the row is found. The out row. What are we doing here? How do we work with an out row? So UE4. Um, get data table row hello answer hub And another video. I know how to make data tables. I just want how to access and get the stuff out of it. Aha. Okay, from our data table, out row, break. There it is.
So we can now plug that there, spawn the actor. We're going to just do default collision handling. That should do it. So here we've got an object A. Um, its token name is going to be um, is that what we want? Token name? Yes. Yes. Okay. Its token name is what is being put in for the row name, so we need to make sure is, is that what we're doing? Row name we have set up like that. That's going to get confusing. Let's fix that. Row name cube cone sphere. BP cube, BP cone, BP sphere. I have to restart again. Yeah, let's do a quick restart. There they are. All right. So our cube goes to cube, our cone goes to cone, our sphere goes to sphere. Good to go. Okay. Because we didn't set it. But that's good. That pops up. Master Hood, you. Cube. Look at that. That's cool. All right. Uh, what if we do cone? Cone. All right. Cool. So now we've got object A. We've got object B. We're going to do this better because we can now. Cube. Cone. Sphere. Cubes in one, two, three. Cube. Cone. Sphere. Cube. Cone sphere. Oh, that's a good feeling. That's coming along nicely. All right. Um, let's uh, make this so that we can, um, now I have them all the same color real quick, just for some organization. So this, our color and opacity, uh, let's find, let's make a new um, color. It's going to just be a uh, slate color, I think. And do 
that. Yeah, cool. You there are going to be that green. You're going to be red. You're going to be yellow. Sometimes this um, select thing behaves very oddly. All right. Cube, cone, sphere. Oh, yeah, the um, drag and drop. The payload. Just so that those variables travel with it. Okay, so that's done. I think now what we want to do is get the um, snap to grid, which is not as tough as it sounds. So button down. Drag detected here. Okay, here's canceled. So this um, custom event, this is going to be actually, this needs to happen on the server. So we need to start thinking about multiplayer. That has to happen on the server. If it doesn't happen on the server, this was only going to spawn something. It's not even going to do it because I don't think you're allowed to, but um, this is trying to do something client side because we're on user interface. This is a widget. Um, so we need to make something get called over here. So I'm going to make a new event graph and we'll call this no, because everything's network on the game mode. So in here, I'm going to make a new custom event called um, Spawn token at location or spawn token on tile. This is uh, server side. We don't need to worry about replicates. What we do need to do, however, is in our token. is set um, set replicates to true. So now our all of our little things need to make sure that that is set. Make sure that the cube is set to replicate. And we need to make sure our sphere is set to replicate. So Do we? Do they need to replicate? If it's in the server, yeah. If it spawns server side, it needs to spawn. That may not have been necessary. We'll find out. Spawn token on tile. This stuff needs to go over there. So this is handled client side, all the line trace. This location is what 
needs to get passed. So we are going to want a, um, a location, which is going to be a vector. about that what we're going to do here is call spawn token on tile instead and pass in the location this will go over here location and plug in over there our data table is the one that we have stored oh right we need the row name that's got to be passed as well okay we've received it we're getting out the row name from the data table and we're spawning the actor. So this should still work. Yep. So now we're calling that on the server. So if we're doing two clients, which won't work. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, you want to say hi? No, you don't? No, you don't want to say hi? Say hi to everybody. <laughs> I'll feed you in a bit. I fed you lunch earlier. You ate when I ate. So, um, why did that not work? Let's see. Let's do one again and play as client. Oh, it's broken. Why'd you fail? That's annoying. That's very annoying. Ugh, okay. It got rid of our work we just did. And it won't call that. What's going on here? table row from the row name break spawn actor from class transform comes from the location print a string if that's bad server a game mode on it maybe okay 
Save all. Don't do that again. Why are we crashing? Can't even make a crash log. Interesting. Access violation. Pawn begin play, huh? Well, we've already set that. Maybe that stuff. Let's get rid of that. Did it ruin my... Crashes suck. Gotta say, crashes suck. Get my game mode back out. You are good. You are living. You're fine. Okay. Is it making anything? Are we allowed to call these from the client? That's the question. None trying to re read. Call function create return value access none. Game mode reference access none. Oh. Did it break that? No. It didn't break it. I wonder if the UI cannot because this is server side, so it can't get it. Yeah, null if it can't be such as on the client. Okay, that's what we need to do. So it's good that we flipped to client here so that we could test this because we need to test this as if we're, we're connecting. So we need to do this from something that can talk to the server, which is going to be the player controller or the state game state. I'm thinking player controller is where we should do this. Um, so in the player controller, this is where I'll make a new network graph. And in this network graph, we're going to make a custom event called um, spawn token on tile. This is run on the server. We'll even do this so that we know. This is where we need to have our location vector as well as our row name that we need to retrieve. And in our game mode, So here, 
we're going to um, get controller. We want the owner. We want get owning player. This returns the controller. Um, we want to do the same similar thing. BPI player controller get player controller reference. This will return our player controller. Player controller. This returns self. So now over here we can get player controller. This is so we don't have to cast over and over. We're just making an interface call. And then we can add other things in here as well. But um, now we're going to from here, do our server function. And then this, oh. from here, get game mode, get game mode reference. Spawn token on tile. Okay. There we go. And oh, it's because the server's trying to do this. So if local authority, switch authority, if If aha, is local player controller. And that should prevent the server from trying to make a HUD because it doesn't need to do that. Yep. Okay. Cool. So this tells the this <clears throat> tells the server to spawn so our rotation I believe is not um replicated or it, the that's what's going on here it might be because it's the servers trying to keep up why can't we move here however client 2 successfully spawned and you can see it there so that's good but we are not getting any input here probably because there's only one start position, player starts. So what if we make a few more? There we go. They're not replicating to each other. So let's fix that. Our pawn, this is our player, which we should have named better. Set replicates to true. B replicates replicate movement true. Hmm, okay. Set replicated.
I'm going to put that under begin play. So now our pawn replicate movement replicates. I don't know why it, why did that happen again? Might be one of those restart situations. So let's restart, save, selected. I missed somebody saying my dude. I can be your dude, but I don't believe you're here. I missed you. My bad. I get too focused. All right. There we go. Floating around. Oops. We are not replicating to one another yet. So why is that? Flick off? No. Replicate movement. Replicates. So what's going on here? Why doesn't it see it? Two viewers. There's somebody else in the room. If you've just joined, which you have, the goal is to create a little board game project where we can spawn pieces by clicking and dragging them out from the UI. Eventually we'll have a little selection and hopefully we can't yet, but We'll be able to move our pieces around on this board, which is dynamically generated. So we could have a board of humongous size at some point here. But for some reason, that happens. Why does that happen? What's going on with client two? Come back. Launch them in new editor windows. Okay. And they're not seeing each other. So. Oh. <laughs> I know why. We are calling our own functions here which is happening our client side. We need to call this client side and server side so that they both do the same thing. So when we call move forward, move forward needs to be um, server reliable. Blueprint um, implementable event. Same thing for this. And then over here, 
this needs to be move forward underscore implementation, move right underscore implementation. Are we good? It cannot be implemented. Oh, okay. Um, what is it? It's blueprint. Native event. No. How about just blueprint callable? Yep. Okay. So those are going to be called server side. that may not move us client side. So we'll have to see what the result is. Yep. Okay. So it's not happening now. So our movement. We need to have, so we're going to call this move forward, um, let's see, server move forward. We'll rename this server move right. We need um, a client side one. So we need client um, void client move forward. And client move right. can get rid of, I think, this. And let's just call it move forward and move right again. So we're going to implement, implement, we're going to call the client one first, which is going to do the same thing. Um, and then when we're doing that, we're also going to call our server move forward and pass the same value. And then call our client move, or server move right value. So that should sync us up. All right, we are moving again. We had that issue once again in terms of spawning. Let's save all and restart. I think I just need to grab all connected and set up like a um, on level load or a begin play where it grabs all the connected clients and spits them out into our player starts. There we go. Still not seeing movement. So let's go to the documentation. UE4 um, replicate on movement.
I think we're calling the server movement. Mm hmm. Okay. So, what we're going to do this should be server. Forward, move right. Oh. Hmm. This is probably coming back null. I got a noisy cat. So Okay. Because we're not using a character, this is a little bit more complex when we're doing a pawn. So we need to call this stuff on the server. It needs to handle movement, and then it needs to send the transform back to the client. Um, so when we move forward, we're not going to do that yet. We're going to... if value is not equal to zero, we're gonna call our server move forward. Server move forward. This forward vector we'll see what happens. It may not be a replicated thing, so let's see. Um, if get roll um, has authority, there it is. If if this is the server, if we have authority, we want to add movement input. We might, what we might want to do is set all, let's see, get root component, set all physics, hold on, static mesh, set all physics, linear velocity is the new, the new velocity is our value times
hammer component get forward vector. I think. And I think we want to do the same thing here. If has authority, get our static mesh, set all physics linear velocity to the value times our camera component get right vector. We might, and then we need to do this for our lookup and our turn also, because our camera is that. So our camera replicate component set is replicated to true. So that'll set the component. So this component now should replicate. So I think our rotation will work server side. So this, um, we're going to go, we're going to do a uh, lookup. We're going to make this also server and reliable. Server reliable. Lookup implementation. Turn implementation. Uh, again, if has authority, we want to, I think, do this. Is that what's going on over here? No, set physics angular velocity is what this guy's doing. Let's move this in here. We're going to try this and see if it works. So we get the static, no. We are getting the camera set. <laughs> He's using a pawn and just on the static mesh for that. I think we should test that. I might not have even needed to do the linear physics stuff either. So once we've done this stuff on the server, So if that's on the server, what are we doing here? He has it on the event tick. I guess I'll do it on the event tick. I don't like the idea of the event tick. Same thing here, we get if the value is not equal to 0 0.f, we call server move right on the event tick. We call, uh, he has a client call here. Um, you function client reliable. Blueprint callable category equals BG pawn movement is a void. Uh, we're going to call it smooth transform. 
and it wants an what does it want? It wants an F F transform. And what it does is if has authority. All right, nope. Set actor transform to transform. And on the tick, if has authority. So if the, if we're coming from the server, we do we call smooth transform and we pass in get actor transform server side. This feels messy. Not even getting any movement. Um, Server move right. Server move forward. Let's see if that spits it out. Hmm. Wait a second. Sets replicate called on a non directly setting. Okay, so maybe that's the issue. It is calling, it's just not doing it. I say, get rid of that. Let's go back to that. Let's fix this. It should be B replicates equals true, is what I'm used to. Same thing here, B replicates equals true rather than calling that function. For some reason, you can't um, you can't directly, yeah, member is inaccessible. So for some reason, For some reason, that is inaccessible, but you can do the set replicate. I'm not quite sure. All right, so it is calling. It's calling those things. Ah. There would have been collision is why... Um, why it didn't spawn. So maybe this will help. Better. We're not getting um, movement still though. So let's fix that. Let's get this replicated movement working. Maybe we need to do this in blueprints before here. So we're calling this. Our camera component should be replicated now. If we go to our pawn, camera component, component replicates.
right? We can still spawn stuff server side just fine. It's our movement is not working. So move forward. Move forward. So on the input axis, move forward. We need to three, four, on replicate movement. We're using floating pond movement, so that's perhaps what is going on here. Multicast, maybe. Rather than just server. Does the server not see? There should be more than one on. Is it still collision at location?
Oh. Wait. This is okay. Non-character movement replication, simple. Let's try this. Pawn movement component uh, set is replicated to true. Loading pawn movement component set is replicated to true. Think we crashed. Okay, so it doesn't like that. So I'm thinking maybe get rid of that one and see if we can open up after just the floating pawn movement. Okay. Replicating. Did I take out those calls? I didn't, so it's not even calling that anymore. So What are we doing here? We're going move forward, we're calling, move forward, move right. Let's G. 
just oh. let's do that for now. Let's get rid of that. This is just going to be just client side again. We're going to have to handle our rotation later because that's not. But as far as I know, movement movement should be replicated, especially because we're we have replicated movement. There we go. Okay, it's trying, but because we're replicated to the server, um, it's snapping back. So we, that's we're on our way. Okay. So we need to figure out how to get that over to the server. Oh wait, hold on. It might actually be because on our... Let me get rid of that real fast. Test this again. Why do you keep doing that? Spawn default pawn at transfer. Couldn't spawn pawn. Oh. Okay. I think I know why. Let's fix something real fast. Rather than its static mesh being the root, um, this should be a capsule component, like what you would see in a character normally. Class U Capsule Collider. All right, let's. I think it's just component. Let's find out. Rid of that one. Capsule component equals create a default sub object of the capsule component. Um, we want components capsule. There it is. Okay. Root component is equal to our capsule component. Static mesh setup attachment to our capsule component. We need to save everything, close, then compile this because this kind of stuff does tend to crash things.
Let's reopen. I'm going to go get another one of these. Carpon again. All right, we've repaired that. This should be at zero zero. It is our capsule component. Is right there. And it's happier. We are still not replicating. Let's, so I'm going to do as a listen server. So this is the server. Server's moving. Server's happy. Clients are not. So the server's not even seeing the, the client. So we need to, um, first of all, fix also our no. Does that keep working? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, so we need to get that over to the server side. So What if we just set actor location and set actor rotation? Let's do that. Um, so I'm going to wrap these if value is not equal to zero. We'll add our movement input. We just want one um, server side reliable call called um, to server set transform. Get rid of these. On the tick, we want to call server set transform and get actor transform. So that should be called server side at each tick, which isn't very performative, but let's just see if that works first of all. Client sees server moving. Cool. Server sees the client moving. 
And because we're a sphere, there really shouldn't be any rotation. But we can do something real quick. Let's get a... Um, Cube, shrink it. Here's our forward. It's going to be of um, clone. So now we can see if we are getting our rotation as well. No. Okay, so rotation's not working. So that's why it was messing up is, is it was putting us both um, putting all the spawns in the same spot initially. So. That's smoother, the client moving, calling to the server, is smoother than the server call, um, getting set to the client. So what if we make this net multicast instead of server? Smooth. Whoa. So the server moving is still smooth. Client is now screwed up. So the client, no, that needs to be server called. And I think it's because it's doing it on the tick. So rather than tick, We need to put it um, so we're adding movement input and we need to call um, server set transform get actor transform let's see if this smooths it smooths it out I don't like calling it twice like that. I don't know why a server side add movement input wasn't working. I don't need to return to that to find out. Hmm. It's not any smoother than putting it on the event tick. So for now, on the event tick, we're just going to call our server transform. So three viewers. Hello, people who have joined. For a summary of what we're making is a networked um, battle map for uh, tabletop games that is uh, simple and fast to use, eventually being able to drag out pawns into the world that will snap to grid 
and be able to move around with um, between uh, game master and players. This uh, grid is designed with a macro right now, so it will be adjustable, such as we could go 100 by 100. Kaboom! Not exactly a performative grid. We probably don't want to do that. However, it is dynamically generated. So let's set that back. Let's let's do a how about twenty by twenty. How's how's that for performance? Can we do it? It kind of sucks. It's probably because each one, yeah. See, if we get close, it's okay. It's because of the material that's on it. So we'll we'll return to that down the road when we're thinking about that kind of thing. For now, let's return to a 10 by 10. Because we can we can do that just fine for now. Okay. So we've got our little eyeball. Um, I want this. Uh, let's not worry about rotation. Let's get um, snap to grid working, which is not as difficult as it sounds. If I can find what I followed. Okay. So what he does is with player controller, on the event tick, gate, enter. To open the gate, left mouse button, go to a branch, get hit result under cursor by channel. So we're going to shoot out from our mouse cursor on the visibility channel, break it. If it was a blocking hit, we get the hit actor, cast it, to the our um, let's go to BG token the our our parent class so it's a BG token make some space that token we're going to promote to a variable this is our selected token. We're going to set uh, get the static mesh. Can we get it? Blueprint getter. No. Specifier must be given a value. I don't know what that means, but let's do this. Um, returning a use static 
mesh uh, let's see, youth function. No, I know what we'll do. We're making this complicated. It doesn't need to be complicated. We just need to make a blueprint class. Pop our BG token. BP token. There's our parent class. These guys now need to be reparented to BP token. Doesn't look like we can do it that way. So BP token, class settings. to BP token. There we go. Static. Why can I not get the static mesh? Visible anywhere. Blueprint read only. That might be it. We didn't give blueprints. Yeah, okay. Let's do that with all of our components on things before we reopen. If we ever wanna be able to access these in blueprints, we need to make sure that those have that. That's all we have for actors. So our BG token We'll keep it at the C++ top level for now because this makes it easier. Get our static mesh. There it is. We have it now. We need to um, set the simulate physics to off because we're picking it up. And we need to set collision enabled to no collision. And then we open the gate. So this is when we click, excuse me, click on something, click on a token that we've spawned in the world that's sitting on the board. Collapse that. When we release it, no, we're not, we're not yet. Come over here. So this is a BG token type, okay. So exit needs a branch. We're going to um, get a hit result under cursor for objects. The object type, we're gonna make an array. We are looking for um, world dynamic. Hit result, we break again. We are looking for a hit actor, get class, needs to be equal to. We're looking for our BP tile. So these, we need to find under our mouse, these, um, these tiles. So if it is equal to the tile, 
we need to get that actor's location. Get the tiles location. So let's um, we're going to um, promote that to a variable. So this is our target tile. And we are going to get our selected token, which we only have because we have exited and have it. The gate is open only because we have this, so this should be valid. However, let's just be safe. We are going to set the actor location um, to the target. Um, we're going to add. So our selected token, we get its original location. We're going to interpolate smoothly. V interp to the target tile plus a little above it. Um, delta time is get world delta seconds. The speed, I think speed is in probably 20 millisec, 20 frames probably. So that goes to the new location. So that will move it and snap it grid to grid as we hover over tiles. Because if we're not hovering over a tile, this isn't this doesn't happen. So that's the that's the snapping um, action right there. So this snap selected token to tile if hovering over one. If our mouse if the mouse is hovering over. This is get get a token if um, clicking if uh, trace result is okay. Do trace result with left mouse click, and if token is underneath, get reference to it. Uh, so now we need a, a release. So when we let go of the token, it's going to drop it and snap it to a tile. So we need to first make sure our selected token is valid. We're going to set actor location, if it is valid, to our target tile. Um, plus 50, so a little above it. We'll figure out base upon, like, um, we'll get neater on how to put it right on the surface of the tile later. Uh, so that's the new location. We're going to um, set our target tile to zero. We're going to zero that out. We're going to turn... Um, We're going to do this stuff. So first, we don't need that. We might not even need it here because we're not. It's uh, it's not falling into the map. The, I don't think the physics is ever enabled on our on our stuff. But we're going to put this back to query only, and then we're going to clear. Clear our reference, and then we're gonna, we're gonna close. So we spawn.
we get it. This might be a server issue, server client. So the board Build grid should be done on the server. So, authority. So if we have authority, we build the grid. Cool. Okay, so the this is now only on the server. Our tile doesn't replicate, so that let's fix that. There you go. Okay. So these exist on the server and they replicate over to the client. Okay, so that there is a little bit working, however. Let's do some, let's spit out some, uh, capability, print string here. This is, um, no, uh, let's see, no actor hit. This cast fails will print out failed to cast to BG token. Oh, no owning connection for actor. Server set transform will not be processed. Process remote function. Let's fix that. That's annoying. No owning connection for actor BP pause. Well, that screws up. So that fixes that. I think it's because um, this is being called on the pawn and it needs to be done on the player controller because the pawn doesn't know. Yeah. So I'll fix that. We're going to fix that another time. So this... Um, Doesn't get um, needs to be happening in the player controller to successfully pass to server. Okay, so we'll do that next time. But it's at least clearing our 
our output log. So we put a cube out there. Cool. So you see that it's failing to cast here. However, it's working here. So clicking on the cube is good. I've got a cat deciding that it's time to, to howl for attention upstairs. So this is probably where it's failing. Um, no tile hit result. Spit out a cube. No tile hit result. There you go. That's the issue. OK. Because Well, it's world dynamic. And in our class defaults, we replicate. What happens if we just play as a standalone? Is this is this a server thing? No. Okay. So even standalone is not working. So let's take a look over here. What's going on? Tile should just be a static mesh. Yeah, OK. Uh-huh. So why don't we print out what we are finding. If false, print out the hit actors display name. What are we what are we seeing? Hmm. BP pawn. Interesting. Okay. Under cursor. I wonder. Okay.
let's see, I want to prevent, uh, let's see, I'm going to do a block all dynamic on the pawn with this capsule. We're going to go custom. This is a pawn, and we're going to do uh, query only. Bring the camera forward a little bit. That might be the issue, is we are hitting ourselves. Go back to, um, oops. Whoop. Pawn. Pawn collision, okay. There we go. So, I think that's where I'm going to end for today, is we've got the ability to spawn and click and drag our actors out. So, next we'll just fix... Um, the actual initial spawn. So when we drag it out, they um, first will initially snap properly. And then um, we'll go from there. But I think that's a pretty solid beginning to a, um, a battle map for tabletop games and Dungeons and Dragons because we can if we imagine chess pieces or little fighters I don't know, shield, sword I want it to be simple little ambiguous chess looking pieces um, and eventually, you know, we could create some basic wall pieces uh, door pieces um, just so you get a little visual and then um, we will fix hello We'll fix the replication and the networking. That's going to be the longer side of things. And then we have to make a the lobby and how to connect. Uh, so there's some work ahead. But this isn't bad for a first day, the first five hours of uh, putting an idea together. So um, thanks for joining me. Uh, I'll be on, um, I got a dentist appointment tomorrow, so I'll try and get on maybe after that, but um, if not, tomorrow, Thursday, around 9 to 10 a.m. Mountain Time. So, see ya.